Hi folks, thank you very much for joining me. This video is just a blatant excuse to play five beautiful guitars for you. Uh, it'll include a quick bit of background about each guitar, what it sounds like, and we'll put playing tips at the end. In case you get bored, you could just cut off at that point, but if you want the playing tips, you can stay to the end and get those. Let's get started. First up is this Gibson ES335 from the Memphis Custom Shop and it sounds epic. Anyway, here's the tune. Next up is the Heavy Relic Custom Shop Telecaster and despite having a humbucker and a Seymour in the bridge it still sounds like a Telecaster. <laughs> This next little clip will show. Next up, 1960 Fender Stratocaster, or 2017, from the custom shop. I bought it because, well, every man has to have a Strat. I'm not really a Strat guy. Um, it's the guitar I play the least. I don't think I'm going to sell it because every man has to have a Strat. And there'll be periods where I do sort of fall back in love with it. But it's been quite a long time since I've picked this up. It doesn't get played nearly as much as the other four. Here's a little clip so you can see what it sounds like.
Almost it sounds like no other guitar, doesn't it? It sounds like a Strat. And if that's your thing, then that's your thing. And it also does, uh, I don't want to do Stevie Ray, but it does that lovely bass thing. <laughs> Next up, the star of the show, in my opinion, this is a Gibson Les Paul R9, uh, so it's the 59 reissue, the nitro's gone all very dull, and the aged sort of hardware, um, the dark neck, this is the guitar that inspires me the most, I just love it, and it sounds everything you want it to be, it can be clean, and it can be Gary Moore, it's just... <laughs> and a gravitas. Anyway, here's me trying to rip it to bits. Next up, we're back in 1952 again with this Gibson Custom Shop reissue made in the year of Les's death, 2009. So they made some hundreds of these, not thousands, some hundreds to commemorate his death. I just love it. It's got the most comfortable neck. It's an even nicer neck than the R9 has. Uh, almost as nice as the Telecaster's neck. And I just love it. It's really comfortable for me and I just love looking at it. I just think it's so cool. And I quite like the quirks. It's noisy. Like if I turn the, if I dare turn the volumes down, what's that buzz? You know, but you forgive it because it's just great. And the bass pickup seems to really kick the ass of the. The bass pickup's more powerful than the than the neck. So for example, the neck. and just, just means you go to the neck when you want to blast and do your solo rather than traditionally going to the bridge. I ain't changing that, I just love it. So let's hear how this can sound. tips relevant to the stuff I played on the 335 would have to be vibrato, vibrato within the chord, whether it's just two notes or the whole three, or sometimes I'll find it difficult to do even just two and I might struggle and just have to do one, for example, it still brings it to life. So if I go Sounds like a beginner. If I go, suddenly I'm a pro. Oh yeah. Playing tip relevant to the Telecaster stuff I played was use of pick and fingers. Pick held in the normal way and your middle and ring finger backing it up and you can do everything from grabbing.
absolute cornerstone of my playing to rolls like some people will go thick string to thin like this that's me I do that some people do it the other way around some people do a mixture point is do whatever works for you right playing tips relevant to the Gibson Les Pauls I was playing Right, the first pattern I think I learned on YouTube, I learned from YouTube, is this one. And then I probably stole this one. Then I half stumbled on this one myself. this one myself the other day which creates real speed when you do it fast the point is this it's the four steps forward three steps back got another four forward three steps back so you, you're working your way from there to there but in little stages kind of it's like waterfalls and this shimmering effect of notes blasting everywhere it's just it's like shotguns it's just great or if you can connect the neck, I can't do it very well, but for example, on the gold top, I think I was doing something like this. So that was my rather crude way of going from there to there. Obviously, other people on YouTube do it far better than me, but I just learned those little things. There's no, it's, there's no, it's not easy. It's just practice. I was a practice trying to work how how I can do it. Like so you could slow that down. You could learn it note for note, but don't. The point is. We all work from different positions. For example, there's my A position. There's the Layla position. Uh, then you're now into this box pentatonic that we all know and love. Then there's this position here. Um, from kind of there, come back to there. So it's just finding little fast licks within those little boxes and connecting them up the way that you want. Now, when I go on YouTube and I watch certain people's channels who can do that really well, I learn them lick for lick and I struggle because they don't start, say, on this note. They maybe start on this note. Or, and I can't do that. That doesn't go for me. So the point is, find out which note works for you. Do you want to start on an upstroke? Is that easier? Or should you start on a downstroke? Find the one that works for you. But that was the hardest most hour intensive part of my playing in the last few years is learning some of these patterns and creating my own patterns based on the principles of going up four steps back, three up another bit. To, it doesn't have to be four and three, the point is patterns of six, patterns of five. Find your little ways and you'll have a few little light bulb moments and when you do, it's great. And I'm only just scratching the surface for that. But hope that helps. Bye for now.